is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Miles Far Podcast. Happy New Year to all of you. Uh, if you guys are watching this, it is 2024. If uh, you were here recording it with us, which I don't know how that's possible, then it's still 2023. Um, today, I have a very special guest with me. Someone that, not knowing that I had known it was her, been a fan of since going to Halloween Horror Nights um, for many years. I've gotten to see her do a lot of things in her career that uh, have helped strengthen it even more to get uh, further to where she needs to be. Um, and she is just so talented. Please welcome my guest star. Thank you so much for that. That was so sweet. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a long time knowing you and being able to scare you and entertain you for quite a long time now. I know. You know like at, at least six years, right? Yeah, I mean, I think we have this. I've We've had this conversation a few times that, like mm-hmm. I said, before I knew you, I was a fan of you. Um, and then you listen off like when we would have conversations, you listen off some of the characters that you played, some of the years that I've went. It, it's just it's so it's so funny that it's come full circle to here we are today. Yeah. And now we're homies, it's, yeah. which is so cool. I know. <laughs> I, so cool. I, I fanboy about it a lot, but it's it's just it's just fanboy me that it's just a haunt fan. And <laughs> to know that I get to know someone as talented as you, that that's really that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, sweet Mars Attacks T-shirt. Thanks, dude. <laughs> that's that's one of my favorites. That's been that's been one of my favorites for a while. That's no, that's that's a very underrated movie, I think. I firmly agree. I have it tattooed on me, so I love the movie. Perfect. Yeah, those aliens. I mean, you just can't get that noise out of your head of how they talk. No, I'm, I it was replaying in my head as soon as you said it. <laughs> um. All right, Star. So let's 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 take it from the very top for you. What what was it for you that have you always been? a Halloween and horror fan or was it something that later on in life that you discovered that this was a new realm, a new world for you to, to come play in, to come check out? Like, how did this all begin for you? Yeah, well, it's kind of funny. Um, I definitely wasn't a Halloween or horror or haunt person at all growing up. Um, I had like, uh, I was honestly, it was one of my phobias. Like I would leave, I would visit Universal Studios as a kid and go out the emergency exit of Van Helsing, like was not down at all. Um, but you know, one day my sister kind of came back home and was like, Hey, like I signed you up for an interview at Universal Studios. And I was like, okay, cool. Like I'll be a ride operator or whatever. And, um, it turns out like, I was like, okay, so what is this exactly? And I went and looked online and they were like, prepare to be active, prepare to scare people. Like, and we were going for like horror nights. So you know, so we got the audition and I was like, all right, like I'm going for it. Like this is scary, but like everyone here seems cool. So I went for it, got it and just kind of got pushed in immediately. Um, Horror Nights does this thing where like halfway through the season, they'll put out another audition because people, you know, fall off or quit. And so I called it the cattle call. Like they just wanted people there and I just got thrown into it. Um, And it was no looking back. Like, as soon as I, my first night scaring, I fell in love, like just the atmosphere. And like, you know, the community is just so awesome and welcoming and you could be from all different walks of life and, and, you know, meet someone from across the, across the world and become friends with them. Oh so, yeah. A hundred percent. Um, and, and, you know, that continues. That's funny you say that. I mean, you see that everywhere. Uh, that you go to that's outside of Halloween and, and the haunt season. I mean, you, you look at things that happen year round and the community is just so connected and, and well diverse and, and just so like, there's a little bit of everything for everyone, you know? And, and, yeah. and that's what I love about the community is, is that, you know, there's no hate, you know, there's no, there's no room for any of that. It's just all good vibes and, and a fun time. Yeah. That's why I fell in love with the community. It's just, it's really all about acceptance and like, come as you are you know, we will love you either way. And I just think it's so special. Yeah. I mean, we all have, we all have pasts, you know I mean? And, and we're all trying to move forward and, and going different places with that and, and to meet all these people to, to kind of relate to a lot of things. I mean, it's just been, it's honestly like a therapeutic experience when you yeah. meet all these people, you know, it's like, Oh wow. I'm not alone in the world, you know? Mm-hmm. So. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. Uh, so Halloween Horror Nights, the, a lot a lot of people would say the pretty much the top of the 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 list of of haunts where where people you know people love people know it's the popularity every year gets bigger and bigger 
Uh, what was the first year for you and what do you remember what you were doing? Yeah, um, it definitely is one of the top in terms of production value. And, you know, that budget is unmatched. But um, I started back in 2015 as a pool performer. And um, pool performer pretty much means that I'm in a group of scare actors that fill in where needed throughout the park. So I really got a taste of every single, um, you know, every single position of the park, whether that be scare zone, maze, you know, um, or blackout character even that year, which was really fun. Um, but I ended up getting permanently cast that year in Insidious, Into the Further. Um, my sister and I were the only female in like Black Bride characters, which was really funny in a cast of all dudes. It was like my sister Diamond and I. Um, but that role really just kind of catapulted me into my scare acting career because you had to be super dramatic. I don't know if you remember the role, but that big dress, the bit, you know, it was just, you had to like act big and I just really threw myself in and went for it. So that was my first like real per permanent role. I mean, how could I forget a role like that? that I think that that character in that movie had scared the hell out of me and that was the one thing that i was terrified of going through that maze so kudos to you guys i mean you guys you guys did your job did your job thank on you me. yes <laughs> um that's awesome i mean insidious everyone knows insidious everyone loves insidious it's one of those films that when it came out it was it was something that we hadn't seen something like that in a very long time and they they nailed down that formula and then to translate that into a an, into a walk through attraction I mean, it, it was it was terrifying. I mean, they brought some of the, mm -hmm. the, the best scenes of it, the, the scariest scenes. And yeah, if you guys went through that maze and saw and saw the, the, the woman in black, the, the bride in black, it, it was it was terrifying. It was. Yeah, terrifying. it was. They did a great job with that maze, too. It was beautiful. So well done. Oh, yeah. I think that was honestly like I remember that being just a solid year, too, because it, it was just there were so many great. Um, mazes there too and then you know years and years to come it would just start going from there i i feel like there was a certain point at halloween horror nights where like they knew they had something and every year started going up up and up you know what i mean yeah they started leveling up yeah so that was cool mm -hmm. uh insidious i mean what was there anything for you that going into that role you kind of felt like intimidated about or did, did you like did you do a lot of studying with the characters movements like how was it for you going into it well that's the thing like like I said I wasn't really into horror so right. like I you know I got put into this role one night as a pool performer not really knowing anything about it I hadn't seen Insidious yet um I didn't know the story behind it so I just kind of was talking to the other black brides to see what they were doing and I just kind of followed them but um I also put my own twist into that um I pretty much took out my phone that night and was like looking up insidious clips but yeah I was really trying to <laughs> really trying to channel this character that I've never seen that's awesome no I I think you know for all the cast there and, and any of the insidious mazes too I mean I, I've enjoyed going through all of them so whatever you guys are doing you're doing something right so <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, th that's something that uh, I've showed people POVs of in the past because like a lot of people just didn't couldn't believe that they'd done something insidious if they missed it, you know, and it's it, it's something that it's one of those properties, like I said, that just gives you that eerie feeling when you walk into that house, you just kind of, even though it's amazing, you know, you're not going to be like touch. It's just that feeling. You just know what's going to happen. Totally agree. It actually, Insidious ended up being my favorite movie horror franchise. I just think it's so fun. And this most recent movie, it was really good, too. Oh, 100%. I, I had a lot of fun with mm -hmm. that one. Um, mm -hmm. So 2015, we had you as the, the Bride in Black in Insidious. Uh, I believe, was that one where it was located in the Jurassic Park area at the time? Yes. Yeah. The Jurassic Park Q line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I mean, I missed mm -hmm. that location so much. That was such a Me good too. Place so big so it's such a good floor uh plan right there they should bring that back one day um 2016 arguably what i think is the best year of halloween horror nights um you the, I, i'm assuming you come back you 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 had the adrenaline in the, in the first year you, you you actually really enjoy it it sounds like how does it feel coming back for 2016 man oh i just got the chills 
coming back for 2016, it was, I was ready to see where they would put me. Right. Um, because I felt like I had given my all to every character they gave me. And I swear the, the character I ended up playing was amazing. I was purge red in, um, the purge gauntlet. And this was a great year because like you said, every year it kind of leveled up this year, they had a guided scare zone. So it yeah. was this, big open space like it took a long time to get through there was never a line night lines through it um i don't know how we weren't like um what is it called when you like tin can tuna cans um conga line yeah, yeah. Like, i don't know how it wasn't that the whole time but it was so much fun and it was a it was a guided scare zone so it was just putting a bunch of kids in this area that we could just run around like there was no direct hide for me to sit in and stay in all night long. I got to explore the whole purge area. So man, that was, it was a great year. Um, and that was the first year where uh, my sister and I got chainsaws and it was like a big deal for these two new chicks to have chainsaws. We were just crazy out there. So they decided to put a 14 pound machine in our hands. <laughs> And you know, that could go one of two ways. That can go uh, very mm -hmm. good or very chaotic, but in the end, chaotic still means good in your end. So exactly, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, Purge Gauntlet, I, I remember that it, it was something that when we showed up in 2016, we were actually very shocked to see because it had not been announced. It kind of was just secretly put there and it kind of just was that was the cool part about it. It was like, oh, wow, like I'm walking into this event and I didn't even know this was going to be there. So that was like one of the first things I remember me and my cousin going to was before we even got down to the mazes. We're like, we got to check this out. And and you're right. It was like a self-guided. um kind of a pathway for a scare zone but i always treated it as like its own little maze too because it kind of mm -hmm. felt like going through some of the best moments of the purge you know and i i think when they had the decision to bring the purge to halloween horror nights that was such a great decision because you know i remember the opening ceremonies of like the siren going off and all the characters coming out and like that was just the hype behind hearing that siren and hearing that announcement that alone was awesome and then to go through the gauntlet and then kind of have them kind of take over the entire event was really, really cool. I mean, it was it was one of those things where I remember just just seeing some of the most iconic characters of the purge, uh, you included. And just to see this and, and to kind of live in the purge like that, that's something that I've always seen those movies. And I'm just like, damn, how would I even survive that? Yeah, no, I firmly agree. I always thought the purge at Universal was so great because you can really put yourself in the situation. You know, it's humans who are the real monsters. And, you know, we're not talking about, you know, thinking outside of fantasy or demons or things like that. Like, this is something tangible that, like, we can all kind of see potentially happening in our lifetime. Yeah. Hopefully not, but uh, but you but you get it. it. Like you can really put yourself in that atmosphere, and like like you said, those opening ceremonies were just so hyped, and the crowd was so hyped, and everyone was so happy. Like, oh, it was that was a great year. What do you it really what, was, and that was a great zone. What would you say some of your most like? I mean, you you mentioned having that freedom uh, of kind of roaming around in that zone, having a chainsaw. What would, would, would you be like, what would be some of your most like memorable kind of times that you had in there? Like certain areas that you liked a little bit better than others that scare in, like, you know, some, some fun scares that you had in there. Like, do you remember a lot of, of what went down in there? Yeah. I mean, I remember tons of what went down in there. Um, every night was something new because I mean, if you remember, we had a lot of space for that front purge zone. So we would, right before um, we would open, we would go and play hide and seek or hide and scare and like try to find different different spots. So by the end of it, there was this little cubby that had two windows. Um, it was, you know, just probably like a three by three box. Right. And um, in each window were dummies. And by the end of it, you know, people had been punching the dummies, like they'd been coming off. So I like jumped in the window and it was like my time of the night where I wanted to get really good scares, but I was kind of tired. So I would just like kind of lean out the window and dummy and just put my hand out and I would get people dropping to the floor because people who had been through this hadn't seen someone in that little box before. So I would oh, just man. get in, go in there towards the end of the night and, um, and get people. But we all just had such a good time finding different spots. Like, you know, 
wiggling ourselves into little corners, trying to get people. Um, it was just so great. And then it, it was just, there was never anything boring there. Like we had so much to play with and have fun with. And, um, you know, like you said, it wasn't on, it wasn't announced or anything like that. So people were surprised to see it and really happy to see it. Um, also, I felt like we had a lot of reoccurring guests come in there. Like, you know, they would just leave and come right back right. and come right back. So, um, you know, that was probably a really fun part too, but we, we had a good group of people that year. Now I, I forgot to ask you for 2015, but also I can ask you for both years. You Everyone knows the reputation of Halloween Horror Nights and how big of an event this is and how much celebrity status comes through. Uh, that being said, within your 2015 and 2016 years so far, because I mean, you probably got some stories leading up to that road, uh, 2015, 2016 year, did you, did you see anybody that was famous? Did you scare some, did you drop some celebrities? What, what, what went down with that? Yeah, I mean, um, I've never dropped any celebrities because usually they have a whole posse with them. Um, but I have seen some people come in there super hyped to see us. And um, who was it that comes every year? He's in Austin Powers. He plays his son. Oh, Seth Green? What's his name? Seth Green. Okay. So Seth Green comes in to Purge Gauntlet and he is hyped. He's like, Purge, I love Purge. And I'm like, Goose, I'm like, yeah. Purge. <laughs> it was so awesome and it and it gave me energy for the entire night because i'm like oh seth green is here having the time of his life and he was very hyped to see me today <laughs> chris griffin so, walked through your scare zone what chris griffin oh, walked through like, your scare like, yeah, zone yeah no literally robot thinking, chicken robot chicken yeah uh, i'm thinking austin powers son austin powers yeah <laughs> no he's he's been in a lot angsty his oh, angsty yeah. self yeah yeah no, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, but you know, there's been a few. There's been a lot of celebrities over the over the years, but that was probably my favorite one. Yeah, I mean, you you like I said, you had such a phenomenal year with 2016. You had Freddy versus Jason, Krampus, um, Krampus. The Exorcist came for the first time. I believe, mm -hmm. I believe there was a Halloween maze there at the same time too. Halloween, mm -hmm. the sequel um so many texas chainsaw massacre i believe was there at the time too yep. like there was just yep. so many heavy hitting properties that it was just like i said it's one of the best years that i remember going and i will never forget that year i think that was one of the first years too i actually finally went like a second time like i i went once with my dad and then my mom wanted to go so we went again the walking dead at the time yeah. those were huge mazes mm -hmm. those walking were dead was a big one yeah um no i i i think that 2016 like i said hands down one of the best years you did you did phenomenal in that gauntlet anybody who was working that gauntlet uh thank you for all you guys did in there i mean it was a great surprise to to walk into horror nights and then go to this gauntlet and then not knowing what it was going to be and then walking out like holy shit we got to do that one more time like mm -hmm. it was scare zone two what it do we love that we love that little zone oh you guys had your own little that was your own little freaking play area right there man you guys kind of yeah. had like it was all separated with walls and stuff so you guys had your own little area like i bet it I, I, and that's what i felt that probably felt fun knowing that you kind of you guys had your own like private area because it was all walled off and yeah. stuff yeah and then i mean i know that you see those pas with their little glow sticks we had one for the whole thing so we were <laughs> like this is amazing free for all yeah free that's, for all substitute awesome. teacher yeah, oh yeah. yeah. No, and, and and I remember they, they brought some iconic scenes from the purge in that in that year. Um mm -hmm. things that you see and they even decorated the entire the car with the lights. I mean mm -hmm. that was awesome. Um you uh it's no secret, obviously, people have seen footage. Uh it's no secret you are amazing with chainsaws. And and to to kind of have Thank that you. that first year, were you a little intimidated getting the chainsaw where you were kind of like Nah, just give me this thing. I'm ready to go. Like, I, I love, I'm going to do what I can with it. Yeah, I mean, okay. So the thing is, like, I keep reminding you, like, I wasn't into this lifestyle right. or community for mu for much long before I got the chainsaw. So I didn't really understand, like, the hype behind it. Right. Um, I was just like, let's go. Like, my sister and I, like, let's just go. And, like, we go, we give 100% to everything we do. So it was just some, another challenge for us. Um. I didn't realize like how much fun I would have with it. I didn't realize the 
the experiences that it would bring me. I don't know. Like it, it was, it was really fun. Um, granted, once I did get it, I did realize like, oh, this is a little bit of a boys club mentality. Like, hmm, they don't like, they don't consider female chainsaws as aggressive or, you know, as scary as the guy chainsaws. And those are like the little nuances that I would like pick up on. So I feel like my sister and I both set out to just kind of like smash those uh, stereotypes. Oh, you guys definitely opened some doors. I'll tell you that you guys paved a, a big path for, you know, that. I mean, you see that it, it's common now when you go to Horn Nights, like you see a lot of females holding chainsaws. And I think, I think oh. a lot of that has to do with you and your sister kind of opening that door and showing them, Hey, there's nothing to be afraid of. Y'all need to just come out here and give more energy. Like, and show these guys, mm -hmm. hey, we can hang too. It's no, it's no big, it's no big deal. We can hang too, and we can do it better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm right there with you. I definitely think that we, um, we showed a lot of people that like you can do this. Um, granted, it's not easy. It right. is extremely hard, and it's a dangerous machine. Like you have a 14, 15 pound weapon. You know, right. um, so there is like you have to have a good head on your shoulders and a strong body and mind because that thing will wear you down. Um, you know, it'll physically at least, right. if not mentally, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's definitely like, I felt, I feel like I've always respected it. Like, okay, this is, I am, it's a privilege. I'm being trusted to hold this with tens of thousands of people that come through this park every night um, to swing it at them. Um, so it is a lot of work, but I always had a lot of fun with it. And I feel like that's why, not not that's why, but I feel like it's a big reason why a lot of girls now are like, yeah, I can do that. Absolutely, you can do it. Like, Yeah, we got yeah. we got, we got, we got a story I want to talk about later when, when we get to your, your this year stuff, because I feel like you, you, you did some things for some people this year that they will never forget. And you gave people opportunities they will never forget. And we'll talk about that a little bit later because that that is the reason why I brought up the opening that path because we're gonna we're gonna go down and, and lead up to that moment. Uh, no, I, I I thank you for that for that for being part of that that kind of that 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 new era of transitioning from just male a male dominant field to hey females can do this we can hang we can do it better and I and I think I have seen that progress over the years now you start seeing more of them want to come out and experiment with that try it out and then honestly get a love for it and, and keep coming back and, and improving their craft um but like you said it, it it will take a toll on you and it's not like it's just pick up a chainsaw and go you're right it has some weight to it so that weight's gonna make a difference after carrying that thing around all all night you know mm -hmm. um but it it, it I will forever be grateful for for just that 2016 year. Um, it, it was just such a great year, and and everything, which brings me to our next year, 2017. Now, this was a good one too because I was a huge fan of The Shining, and they did The Shining this year, that year, and it was just such a phenomenal maze. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there was so much great stuff at that 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 event this year. That that was the first year we started Nights of Horror, and that was the first year I actually covered a haunt. Because of Horror Nights, that was like, all right, we're going to do this. Um, 2017, what's it looking like for you? I mean, now you're, you're, you got your second year under your belt, going into year three. Um, I'm assuming maybe within the years, you, you got a little bit more uh, horror knowledge under your belt, maybe. You started watching yeah. a little bit more over the years. Yeah, well, at this point, I was full in it. You know, the time in between Haunt was spent with all of my family, my scare family. Um, you know, it, it was, the year was waiting for Horror Nights. Like it, it started, I started transitioning into that. Um, 2017 was the year I was Kiss Me in Blumhouse. So another purge year. Um, this year was amazing because I had always wanted to be this character. This character was the purge character. Yeah. Everyone knows her. Um, she is just a badass. Um, All she wanted was a candy bar. All I wanted was a candy bar, but <laughs> she took it. So, um, yeah, I love her. Um, I had a chainsaw that year, which was great too. Super challenging year for me physically because 
they gave me a corset to wear. So I was wearing a corset for eight hours and chainsawing for eight hours. Like that was really hard, but um, I learned a lot that season about myself and about scaring. And I was just ready to take on whatever the world gave me at that point. Now that, that must be fun for you too, because you kind of get to return to that zone you were in last year, but now it's in maze form. I, I, if I remember correctly, the horse Blumhouse chapter one, uh, which was yep. Purge, Happy Death Day, and Sinister, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, that was that was a good one because I remember opening night when I went. I saw the entire cast of Happy Death Day. I saw Frank Grillo from The Purge. I even got a picture with Jason Blum like that. I remember just standing at that exit, and they all just came out. And we were just in the right place at the right time. Um, Whoa! So it was it was really fun for me. Like I had seen the entire Happy Death Day cast, but I hadn't seen the movie yet, so I didn't really know them. Um, Mm -hmm. and then Frank Grillo was there for the purge and then Jason Blum, obviously, but it was, that was a a, a great maze. And then you talk about, you talk about you playing kiss me and you know, that brings back so many memories. I remember distinctly going through that and just seeing the vibe and the, and the excitement of the character brought to life. And that whole little section, like I said, with the, with the car, with the lights and, and all that, like, it was such a cool little area because that was kind of like the the non-fiction part of the of the maze and then you went in and then you lived like the fiction part of the maze really cool yes it was um it was kind of like a play on the gauntlet to be honest that purge part was open air it was like a little guided scare zone i still had a bunch of space um and i think that's why they put me there because um you know after being in gauntlet a scare zone you have freedom they were like all right we don't want to put four walls put you under four walls you know like (laughs) you get you get this whole zone to play with with your chainsaw so have at it this is your hide yeah. that was another really good year yeah no i i i i absolutely love that was one of my favorite blumhouse mazes that they've done uh especially of how well they executed that purge scene and then the happy death day scenes and then as creepy as sinister is they found a Even way to sinister. execute it. yeah mm-hmm. they executed mm-hmm. it so well um and i really think that kind of maze style is is really great in the sense that blumhouse has so many properties that you can do little bits and pieces of all these different properties and they've continued to bring it back a uh, year after you yeah. know every other year or so so you know it's it's really it was really good to go through that one because to kind of see this anthology of some of blumhouse's greatest hits you know you had the purge which mm-hmm. was probably their their biggest movie at the point at that point uh sinister and and happy death day which you know, the follow-ups right there so for you to be a part of that, I mean, uh, that must have been that must have been fun to kind of continue that purge legacy. Yeah, it was. And it was like you said, it was a really cool idea. I think it was the first time we were seeing, um, you know, a production company being featured as a maze in itself. Right. Um, which was really cool to be a part of that for the first year. Um, I think they should do more things like that. Um, I feel like it also kind of put Blumhouse on the map. Like a lot of people didn't really put together that like happy death day, sinister purge, like all of these, yeah. you know, different movies were the same person. So, mm. so yeah, I thought that was pretty cool too. No, yeah, I I think you're right. I I I think that Blumhouse was already established there as the company, but you like you said, no one put two and two together, knowing that all these movies were under the same production company. So mm-hmm. to have like that anthology maze, and then they came back to do a chapter two, they did a chapter mm-hmm. three, um, just such phenomenal mazes, um, to say the least. I would say two might have been like all right but then like three came yeah. back with fire and i was like okay you got freaky and black yeah. i'm sold yeah yeah i agree <laughs> oh man but um yeah i i think uh, i remember seeing you as that character um or at least i think it was you i mean i went through that that year i went a couple of times so i may have seen you at least once um yeah. and to see you as that character like i said you brought a ton of energy to that character you brought that character to life uh at horror nights and um it was like honestly from from screen to real life right there like it was just insane the only thing you didn't have was the ak-47 but you know well you know we we replaced that with a chainsaw it's okay yeah i think it's a good you know good trade but um i definitely had a good time with that role Uh, that, that, that one looks that one looked a lot of fun like you said you had a lot of freedom going into that now uh again another year of experience of chainsaw added to your belt uh year three but two years for chainsaw now um at this point 
you're you're getting uh, at that point you're already you're getting veteran status you're getting better and better every mm-hmm. single year I think that's year four 15 16 17 18 right yeah 18 year yeah year four mm-hmm. year four for mm-hmm. for your scaring year what was it two for for chains three. three for chainsaws yeah yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. now i loved this year dude hatchet hannah hatchet hannah <laughs> 20 i loved this year Hell's Harvest was such a great scare zone. All of those original characters, the production, the masks, the the costumes, it was a blast. And in the back lot, mm-hmm. right? That was when they had them in the metro sets. Um, no, that was no. This was scare zone one. So top oh, okay. floor, top floor. As yeah. soon as you walk into the park. What was metro sets that year? You remember? Um, was that Holidays in Hell? It was. There you go. Was it Holidays in Hell? Holidays um, in Hell with the turkey. Yeah. No, but Hell's Harvest, that's a good one. I, I, I still think they should turn that, if they're going more on the route of originals, they should turn that into a maze. Ooh, that's a really good idea. Tell more story those on, on that. Those characters were awesome. Um, man, those characters were so fun. That mask, I mean, you remember these masks? They were yeah. this big. Oh, yeah. So how comfortable was that on a level for you every single night? Mm. Towards the end, it got a lot better, but man, at the beginning, my neck was heavy. <laughs> those were those were big foam burlap sacks. Yeah, yeah I imagine they're very hot too. Mm-hmm, they were. Um, the worst part was I had these little pigtails, and every time I turned my head, the pigtail would perfectly <laughs> go in and hit the eye. Oh hole. no! <laughs> so I'd have burlap in my eye like half the night. You're walking like, around like you this. gotta like, you just get an eye patch at that point and just. All right, yeah. one eye in it. <laughs> I think I ended up trimming the little pigtail. Stop putting uh, me in the eyeball. But scare zone one up there. I mean, now we're we're moving from the the Parisian courtyard out to the streets. How did that feel? Did now was that for you kind of like were you more intimidated about that now because now you're in an open street or was it more like bring it on? Um, I was absolutely like, bring it on. I, I felt like it was a puzzle piece. Like I got in there and it was amazing. It was mostly because, you know, you have to figure out your character. You, people are seeing you. There's no places to hide. There's no hot, like no little corners you can hide in or a curtain you can hide behind. You are out in the open. So you, I had way more interaction with people. It forced me to create a character that's kind of funny and also scary I can't really do pop scares because you see me coming but I can all I can freak you out um you know I can make you run I can do all these things so it was another really good year um that pushed me as a performer right for Um, sure no and then and you talk about having fun and trying to and and if anyone knows if anyone ever been to Universal Studios Hollywood uh that main kind of main street for them that main entrance right there. I mean, there's not a lot to really work with. You know, you got to be kind of creative when it comes to that. It's very open spaced and it's very like, there's not places you can just go off to the side real quick and hide, you know, and, and come out for mm-hmm. a scare. It's like, you kind of are in the spotlight the entire time. Um, but that being said, I've had some of the most f- best memories sitting there and just watching people get scared. I mean, no matter what, I don't think it's the, 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 the fact of them having to hide. It's them being super fast. You know, and, and you got to be fast with that zone because you got to like one scare, one scare, one scare, one scare, and then just keep going and just kind of turn around mm-hmm. and kind of scope it out all over again. I've noticed that just kind of watching the talent really bring these characters to life and kind of utilizing the zone the best they can. How was that for you? Kind of like I said, not a lot of hiding places to go. You're kind of in that open for you. What was the best method you found to kind of keep going and kind of keep those scares going? Yeah, I mean, like you said, I. I would just try to bring as much energy as I could. Um, I had all this energy in the previous years and it was just, I was able to let it all out um, in scare zone one. So like you said, you'll see how scare actors work. Like I like to go right to the front of the park and then make my way back in because most people are walking. I'm walking with the flow of traffic. Right. Um, Then I'd, then I'd stop there. And you know, when you stop, at Starbucks area, people were just sitting there watching you. So I would turn around and then I would be kind of funny. Like I would do funny things. I was a doll. I was a big, big, thick old doll. So I would just be, I would just be dumb. And, you know, I would 
I don't know, the Hello Kitty hedges need trimming. So I'd trim the hedges with my chainsaw. Like I have things for this. Oh, um, yeah. So, you know, I would have a lot of fun with it. Um, I would mess with the people who were sitting down, people who obviously loved it. Um, but like you said, really like going in and snaking through the crowd and kind of getting everyone as you can. Um, and with the chainsaw, nonetheless, um, you really learn how to fine tune and um, perfect using the chainsaw instead of instead of the chainsaw being the the reason why you're scaring people, like let you be the reason why you're scaring people. And the chainsaw is just the perfect accessory for it. Right. So like I would, you know, I would learn how to scare people without turning the saw on, just using the those pull cord, um, little things like that where it's, I'm not like consistently revving a chainsaw around hundreds of people. Like that does get annoying and redundant. So um, like I said, it did push me as a performer for sure. I know I love I love seeing some of the tricks that people use with the chainsaw that doesn't require it turning on and still gets a funny scare. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen people just literally let the cord go and that makes a loud noise and people just jump off that alone. Um, I've seen some just kind of twist their chainsaw around and that just cre creeps people out right there just standing still just kind of seeing that sight because you're like, oh, dude, person chainsaw. I don't know if I should walk yeah. towards that person, you know? Yeah, so, we're, we're taunting you the whole time for sure. Yeah, that's so, and that's what I loved about the chainsaws at Halloween Horror Nights. Anyone who's ever picked up a chainsaw at Halloween, they're very intimidating. And that's a good thing in a good way um, as far as getting those scares. Because I don't, for me being as tall as I am, me being as big as I am, I still get intimidated by a person with a chainsaw, no matter what size you are. Because I'm like, mm -hmm. you, you actually have all the power over me right now. You have that chainsaw. I have a camera. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's, that's, I mean, I mean, I, I absolutely love what you, uh, what you've guys done there in the past. I mean, that's why I continue to, to return every single year. But let's talk about another year that I thought was very, very solid year. Uh, 2019. Where do we find yourself looking in your haunt career come 2019? Now you had, you've oh, had great careers. You've had great years yeah, leading from 2015 till now. So where are we at? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, 2019, I was, I had a full-time job, a, a big girl job outside of the haunt industry. And um, I could only give two days to Halloween Horror Nights. So uh, they threw me in pool again, which was kind of a full circle moment because 2019 ended up being my last year scaring um, at Halloween Horror Nights. Um, so I was in pool and I actually got to do a lot of everything. I scared a little bit in the clown maze and, um, you know, killer clowns and, um, a bunch of the lower lot scare zones. I did that mostly. Um, and that was a blast because it was the first time in a long time since what silent Hill that we had a scare zone down there yeah. or actors down there in general. So everyone was super hyped to see us. Um, but it ended up being a little bit too dangerous. I feel like there was just a lot of people down there, um, you know, kind of gets a little bit sardined. Uh, yeah. So it was very, hard to it's a very, yeah, it's a very small time. area down there. So it, it gets really crowded really quick on busy. Mm -hmm. But we had fun. Like, you know, we're vibing off pe the people's energy, people saying, oh my God, there are chainsaws down here. No way. You know, so that was really cool. I was one of those people. I was one of those people. I was like just happy to have a scare zone. Like you said, Silent Hill was the last time we had a scare zone down there. And that was near 2012, 2011. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's been a few years down there. And I, and I feel like that's when you and I unofficially met the first time. Yep. Um, yep. I actually remember that encounter. Yeah. Oh, you can't forget me. Come on, I'm, I'm a big, yeah. uh, but I, I was down there hanging out with my friends. We had gotten the uh, at the time they had the Thursday, Sunday frequent fear pass. So you can go every Thursdays, every Sundays that was, the event was open. And so I would go down there every Thursday, some Sundays to kind of just hang out and have a good time. If you guys remember the theme churros they had uh, every week, that was the main reason why I was going at that point now, because I was like, I got to try every churro. Um but we were hanging out one night. I had, um, for those who've seen me in person, I usually wear one of many things. One of them is a vest. I had just made this vest and Star was uh, down there doing chainsaws and we were hanging out and she just kind of comes up really slowly, really like not really, I didn't really notice her until she started circling around me. She's looking at all my patches and then like kind of gives me this hug and then just walks away. And I'm just like, 
okay um i I, i'm assuming that person was a fan of my my vest so i'll just leave it at that and let's continue on with the night this is already a great night as it is uh no that was that was for me i mean at the time you didn't know how much that meant to me because like i had just finished that 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 vest so like to kind of have someone really um appreciate it like you did um really meant the world to me because i was like oh my hard work paid off I, I, someone actually likes this yeah. it's awesome oh yeah no i had to give you acknowledgement it was a cool vest and i was just like oh let me take my time and look at this guy's vest wow this is cool yeah uh, he looks like he's having a good time and you were always just hyped like oh, I you're was. like this is awesome oh yeah and those kinds of guests like carry you throughout the night so you know like you don't know how much it i appreciated your energy and like just appreciating the fact that we were scaring and having a good time it was just good vibes oh, and 100%. it's crazy how like that's the first encounter that we had <laughs> i know good and vibes. we could have we could have had probably so many encounters we probably did uh before those previous years no, i recognized I, you i yeah. absolutely recognized yeah, you yeah. from like that's why i gave you a hug like i knew that you had been coming but i don't think i had ever really like had an interaction with you that was awesome well i appreciate that i like i said i've been a fan for a while since i've been going to um man i mean i i kind of always looked at your position that year though too was would you guys kind of like roamers did you guys kind of go other places in the park too with the chainsaws because that was the first year they kind of yeah. did that concept yeah so a few of the chainsaws that were downstairs that year or um you know by jurassic world were in chainsaw brigade upstairs at the end of the night so towards the end of the night um, you know, chainsaw performers get a nice long break before chainsaw brigade. So during that long break, they would go upstairs and go, you know, scare and scare zone one for a little bit, just blow off some steam before brigade. So that was a cool and like trailblazing year for potential new new things coming for chainsaw. Now that being your your final year of, of Horror Nights, how was it going into your first day and leaving on your last day? for for that for that one that last time at Horror Nights. Ooh. You had to hit me right in the feels, man. Yeah. The hard hitting questions <laughs> um, on Mindless Horror Podcast. Come on now. Yeah, man. Okay, so going into it, you know, it's this massive company, Universal Studios, like massive movie production company and and an even more massive Halloween event, like the top Halloween event and just being like not knowing or understanding and then walking out and having met so many people and feeling like that place, this big corporation place was my home for so long. And um, having met family, like chosen family and friends and, you know, loves of my life and like just roommates, like it's just, it was a whole world for me. So leaving there was really bittersweet because I had always said people who leave Horror Nights or Universal always end up leveling up and I was really excited to see what was next for me but it was also scary and sad and um, you know I knew I was going to miss scaring but I knew that there was more out there for me for sure. Yeah I mean let's let's take a look at where we're at so far I mean 2015 you start Insidious you know 20, uh, 2016 got you in the Purge Gauntlet 2017, The Horrors of Blumhouse. 2018, Scare Zone 1. 2019, when Chainsaws again, uh, bottom lot, upper lot, you're kind of just everywhere. I mean, what a great transition of things to come. And, and like I said, you know, 2016, I don't know if you knew it then, but you definitely know it now. You guys definitely opened up that pathway for, for not just this event, but other events. You know, we're not... There's there's a lot of independent uh, events that we that we know of out there that 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 do things like this, um, you know, a lot of little little smaller events, uh, other other haunts that do now that have like more females doing this, you know, and and that goes the same thing for sliding, you know, you you didn't see a lot of female sliders out there now now you're starting to see them like crazy. Yep, yep. We can shout out tricks to that. Yeah. Photo tricks. Yeah, yeah. She opened <laughs> up doors over there at, at Six Flags. You know, now she's got a career she's doing on her own. She's doing phenomenal right now. Um mm -hmm. and, and and continues to, to change the game. I mean, if you ever see tricks at 
at a convention or anything, just take a moment and go say hi to her. I guarantee you, you will not be visible. And you will star. miss her. And... Usually if you see Trix, you'll Thanks, see Star. Yeah. <laughs> Most likely, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is, this is where it gets a little depressing for all of us because 2020, the year we like to all try to forget. You know, yeah. it's, it's one of those years where... Uh, but what did you find yourself doing in 2020? Was that kind of just a, 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 a vacation year for you? Because it was kind of like everything was shut down at the point. Um, well, yeah, I was... I was uh, what was the word when people would work? And it was a... People who were actually working during COVID were considered... Oh, I, I worked through COVID too. I didn't know there was a term for it. I just thought like, uh, I, I would say crazy because we were still out there facing COVID, but you know, it's a essential worker. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I was, I was considered an essential worker. So I was working through COVID for a lot of it. Um, and then, you know, the company started going slow and ended up laying people off. So I ended up having a sweet little vacation. Um, and I had set a few goals out for myself. Um, one being how to learn, learning how to spin fire. So that's kind of, um, where that transition has taken place. Um, you know, I had one household that I would visit and we would all, you know, do the testing thing and hang out together. Um, and I was learning how to spin fire pretty much during that time. So it was, a, it was, a, you know, I used it to my advantage. I definitely had a, some time off and it was really sad for a lot of it just because of what the world was going through. But I, you know, I set some goals out for myself and I ended up um, achieving them, which was really nice. Now, one chapter ended, a new chapter opening right here. That, that was, you know, you going from um, chainsaw performer now to a fire spinner. Now that right there, I mean, if you guys have never seen Star spin fire in person, you're missing out big time because she is phenomenal at what she does. She makes it look so easy that it's just like it's smooth like her rhythm and everything is just so smooth that it's just like i feel like i could pick up the thing and do it myself but i know i would i would set myself on fire so you know i'm just i'm cool watching from a distance but what you do with spinning fire it, it's just so amazing because like i said you make it look like anyone can just pick this up and just do it no problem like the tricks you do everything you're just your movement is so smooth when it comes to that like it's just you, you make it look easy. It's, it's, there's no other way to say it. You make it look super easy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that's like the best compliment ever because um, it's not easy. Uh, and it took me a long time to really perfect those moves and, you know, try to make them look easy and right. effortless and, and smooth. So I, that's like the best compliment ever. Thank oh, you. it's 100%. Like I'll watch videos and everything. And I'm just like, how does she do this, man? Like if I were to, like I said, if I were to try to do this, I'd probably set my hair on fire or something. Um, I have a couple times. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it's part of the process, I guess. Right. You gotta, you gotta take a couple yeah. hits to, to learn. You play with fire, you're going to get burned. You know, you know the saying. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so 2020, you, you get to, you get to, you have that opportunity. You have the time to learn that. How long does it take you learning process to kind of, I mean, I know today even you'll probably you're probably still learning things that you never even knew about the fire spinning world. There's so much to learn about. But how long did it take you to really get the basics and kind of uh, your movement down? Oh man, um, it took me like rough estimate, probably two two and a half years to to really feel like I was um, like I could pick it up and light it whenever I wanted and be safe and and feel like I had a good flow. Um, it it wasn't until you know i had a friend call me and ask me to fill in a position that kind of forced me outside of my comfort zone because i had never wanted or thought about performing for anyone i just thought it was a fun little goal for me to have um and that kind of pushed me out of that comfort zone opening up a whole nother world for me of learning and pushing myself to learn um new things and expand my horizons not just one prop picking up in other props and you know yeah but i'm always learning for sure always learning 100 um 2020 going into 2021 where do you find yourself now the world's a little bit more open things are starting to open it mm -hmm. up again halloween horror nights returns not scary farm returns all these events return where do we find star at i was um production coordinating so i was gone 
for more than half of the year, unfortunately. That was the first year that I went to every single event as a guest, and I had a blast. I brought a big group of friends to Horror Nights, and I had seen everyone that I had worked with for the last five years, and they all just assaulted me, and it was (laughs) beautiful. (laughs) <laughs> and it that was, was not what i was expecting to come out of your mouth you're like they all just assaulted me and it was beautiful they did they <laughs> did and it was awesome and it was welcome and oh i gave consent <laughs> no i i, I great. think that's great i mean you out of out of some of the ones that you got to experience now where a lot of the things you got to experience in 21 brand new to you like other than horror nights did you had you ever been to Not Scary Farm? Had you ever been to the Hayride? Have you ever been to like all these other big haunts? Well, yeah. So um, my first year of Horror Nights back in 2015, someone had told me, you know, you should proactively request off a weekend or, you know, a few different days throughout the season. So you get to enjoy your Halloween season. So, um, you know, there were also some nights where Universal was not on but knots was on or dark harbor or hayride so all of the universal people throughout the years we would all get a big group together and go to these haunts and that's really what another reason why i fall, fell in love with it um so yes i have been to all of those other you know haunts throughout the years but 2021 was the first year that i wasn't scaring at the same time so like i wasn't tired throughout the night and like i got the vip and front of the line everything and i didn't leave in an hour because my back hurt (laughs) so so, um so I really got to enjoy it as a guest and you know see all of the different productions and I would and I looked at Hans completely different I would I would hype up the scare actors like you are killing this role you know like it's a different it's a different feeling um it's a different feeling of like being a true fan you know no yeah and I and I and I've really only ever been to events as a fan no, like I so like I know that feeling of coming in, the hype behind it, the, the the hype just standing there opening night and that gate in that crowd just waiting for that rope drop. You know, the, mm-hmm. the whatever pre show ceremony they have, the mazes you're about to go to, the scares you're about mm-hmm. to see, you know, just all that stuff and, and it's just that hype every year. It's like you don't know what to expect when you're gonna go into these mazes. You have an idea, especially when it comes to something like Horror Nights, you have an idea of what these movies are. You have an idea of what these scenes are, but how are they going to translate into a real life maze and how are they going to scare people? That's always the fun right. part, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, what like big wow moments in the mazes yep. are there going to be big props? Like it's just, just the production as a whole from cast to the simplest lighting, like mm-hmm. things like that where I'm just like, wow. Yep. No, a hundred percent. I agree. Um, uh, and I know that uh, as far as, you know, you being a guest of 2021, now we're looking in 2022, you actually got to f- do a little fire stunts, you know, um, ugh, I can't talk right now, fire performing mm-hmm. at Shacktoberfest. Mm-hmm. And now yep. um, the Queen Mary, obviously everyone knows Dark Harbor, the Queen Mary's historic. How was that for you to perform fire at Shacktoberfest in front of the Queen Mary? I have to say it was... Um, a full circle experience for me because the first time I had ever seen fire performing was at Dark Harbor. And the person that was spinning at Dark Harbor ended up teaching me how to spin Dragon Staff. So was her name the Berdetta? fact that, no, no, um, Ignis Trix. His name okay, is, uh, I love Berdetta too. Berdetta is so great. But yeah, she is good. She she did Dark Harbor as well, right? Yeah, she was the, the, voodoo, the voodoo priestess. Yeah, the voodoo witch. Yeah priestess i remember her she was great um but yeah seeing you know being there full circle i was kind of took me a second like when when i before we went on stage i was like this is wild um and you know with the fire stuff i had set these goals but i didn't really think it would happen so quickly right um i was like okay like i want to perform with a group of people or i want like to like put myself in a fire family and i did and then that's kind of how i got shack and once I was, I was like, all right, I want to perform on stage or I want a residency. And then it was at Shacktoberfest, a haunt, like in front of the Queen Mary. And yeah. it was just everything for me because it was these two worlds, like haunt, fire, and in one. And mm-hmm. it was 
amazing. But I also had some serious FOMO seeing the Chainsaw performers at Shack, and I'm like, ooh, that looks <laughs> fun. That. that looks fun. <laughs> Do something at a new territory, you know, to, 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 to do Chainsaw and Queen. But I remember 2022. That was the first year, obviously, Shacktoberfest got introduced. I'll be honest with you. Wasn't the biggest fan of it going into it. But honestly, my mind changed when I left it. Uh, I had a lot of fun. And going into year two was such a great year, too, for them. Um, but that first year, I, I didn't know. I, I really didn't have any expectations going in. It was kind of just like... I don't know why is this? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> is Shaq, does, does he know? Is he okay? Is he just doing investments? Yeah. But now he's good. Um, to see the event of what, I, what was kind of spoken to us. And then what we kind of saw, you know, that was, that was where I was blown away because I was like, well, you guys said one thing, but I'm here. And now this is actually way better than what you told me. So, yeah. um, no, I had a great time that year. Um, to see, uh, to see uh, a lot of my friends over there who returned to the Queen was really cool. And then to see you uh, perform Fire there was a lot of fun. Um, because I, if I remember correctly, you guys were on center stage, right? Kind of performing Fire right there on the sides. Yep. So yep. we got to be on the main stage every night. It was uh, this block party area of, you know, Shacktoberfest and got to dance fire next to lovecraft every night which was amazing and then i'm i'm, I'm assuming uh you got to see the man himself uh you can't miss him <laughs> mr Shaq. mr shaquille yeah, O'Neal. Um, i got i did get to see Shaq. um you know for the vip night he was a big happy man oh yeah i i tried i watched him try to shoot free throws that night it wasn't it wasn't good <laughs> no he still needs to work on that he needs to work on the free me, throws but- that's why he's a businessman now. Yeah. He's not playing. Yeah, he's a smart businessman at that. Um mm-hmm. I love Shaq. That's that 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 but the you know, that's funny for you. That comes that comes like full circle. You had those two years training, doing your movements and stuff, and you finally had a test audience to see like how this was gonna work, you know, and and, mm-hmm. and it seemed like it worked great for you because I continued to see you spin fire at events to this day you actually just didn't you just spin fire recently at, at an event at art sideshow right yeah. yeah yeah i did um art sideshow um out in montclair go visit art sideshow that museum is oh, yeah. awesome but um yeah i i you know and it's in the haunt community that's why i love doing it you know these gigs that i'm getting are actually where i want to be spinning fire so right. it's amazing right right uh now this is the big moment I think this was a, a very huge moment for your your haunt career overall. This is kind of what it was building towards too, and this is kind of I would say the next step for you going forward. I mean, as as selfishly as I want to see you perform one last time, I I know that you you know you you want to start going into the roles of management. Um, and last this past year was a perfect example of why you should lead management. Um. I have been going to the Haunted Hayride since 2019, um, and I still think 2019 was like one of my favorite years of all time, but I have to say, I did notice a lot of major improvements this year, and I have a feeling you're part of that reason why. Uh, for, Thank you. <laughs> for those who don't know, in 2023, uh, Star had the opportunity to uh, manage over at the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride, I believe for talent, right? Yes, performance. Yeah. Everything performance was what I had to take care of. Um, so first and foremost, and I told you this the night we went, I, I am incredibly proud of you um, for what you accomplished. I know it's not an easy gig. I know that this is an event that's put up in literally two weeks. Um, I know that, you know, sometimes it's not the easiest to work with, with also you know, you know, some guests that are a little rowdier than others. Um, but I will say this, and I know the night we saw you, you kind of were just like, <sighs> but I will say this, we went in, we had a great time. Talent was where they needed to be. Um, and overall, I just remember walking out being like, that was such an improvement this year. She did a phenomenal job. I hope she does this again next year. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, It was a lot of work Um, and improvement was really what I was going for because like you, I had been going 
as a guest since about 2018, I think was the first year I went. And I thought it had so much potential. You know, you're in Griffith Park. It's eerie. You know, it's there's not it's not too often that you go to a big haunt at, in SoCal that's not surrounded by buildings. So I it just there's potential in that in that light. But huh, the challenge, uh, it was it was a lot of work. Um, but it was like you said, it was exactly where I needed to be. Um, I got to mold all of my talents and you know experience in whether that be scare acting or my performance or my production coordinating work right into this position. So you know I had that managerial side um, dealing with hundreds of people, and then I had the scare acting side where, as an as these actors, they can respect me because I've been in their shoes, you know, I've had, I've had to do long sets and zero breaks, you know, I've, I've been where they are. So I think um, I ended up gaining a lot of respect from my, you know, the people that I ended up putting in roles, I ended up getting a lot of respect for them. And I love them all so dearly now. Um, but man, that work, it was a lot of work. <laughs> I imagine. I mean, I, 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 what I found fun that you did that I don't see because I mean, it was cool to to see this. You would post like stuff leading up to the haunt of of training people, of of kind of just you working. Um, and I'm a sucker for behind the scenes, so to kind of see that stuff going into what it takes to 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 get to opening night, um. That that was awesome. And and the reason why I brought that up is because I told you we were gonna come back to this again of you paving that way for for female chainsaws. You actually gave a few females this season the opportunity for the first time ever in their haunt careers to actually work with a chainsaw. And from what I could tell from this individual, uh, this person was super, super grateful and thankful to have that opportunity to kind of hear a story like that. You know, and to see where you came from back in 2016, you know, it comes, it must come full circle for you. You must have that sense of like, holy shit, like I am, I was where she was one time. Now I'm actually giving the person the permission to do that under my, my watch, my guidance and stuff. How did that feel to have that kind of full circle moment for you? Yeah, well, I mean, it was just a absolutely beautiful moment. Um, you know, this actor had worked at Hayride for... I think it was over four years right. in, the, in this role, um, you know, giving everything she had to this company. And apparently she had been told no a few times over the last few years, you know, to giving this woman a chainsaw. Um, and when she asked me, I was like, absolutely. Like, let's do some training. And as soon as she started it, I was like, oh, you're a badass. You you're a natural. You can absolutely. Yeah, you're a natural. You can absolutely have a chainsaw, you know, um, I gave her, I was like, let's give you 15 minutes set, you know, like I'll go out and watch you. And she just did incredible. And she, I was so proud of her and, you know, she was really grateful. And in my eyes, I was just, I wasn't doing it like, Oh, like let's give a, you know, this chick a chainsaw. Cause we, you know, cause girl power. Right. It was like, it was like, I was looking at the event as a whole and it worked with the storyline of town square. So I was like, let's do this. Like, uh, you know, and I didn't realize until I think it was the last night of the run. And she was like, at all of these years, you know, people have told me, no, but like they didn't trust that I would be good enough with this chainsaw. And I was just like, absolutely. I trusted you. Like, and I want my actors to be happy. So like I've, someone says no all the time, let's just, you know, see if you're safe and let's put you out there. Yeah. So it was nice to be able to have that freedom to give an opportunity to someone that I felt deserved it. And she just exceeded my expectations completely. Well, this kind of goes back to something I actually forgot to mention too, which was your, uh, your one night guest spot at Valley Fright Night. Um, Ooh, uh, I thought we were gonna thought we were gonna uh, skip past that. All right, we'll skip past it. But uh, you know, to see you, and then uh, the only reason I bring that up is because of your chainsaw work. Um, now to kind of see you translate that uh, your chainsaw work over the years, and not just that year, but just oh, all your years. To see, I remember seeing a video on your story of of kind of how you were training at, at Hayride to to watch you kind of 
teach them how to turn it on and like the, just the basic fundamentals of the chainsaw of what they need to know and everything. It was things like that where I'm just like, man, I wish there would be more people out there to kind of get to film these behind the scenes experiences for like end of the year documentaries for like the season, because I don't think people realize how much work and time and, and blood, sweat and tears go into these events, you know, and to kind of have all that on camera to, to kind of see that background of like, this is what 2023 looked like for us. Like that could be fun for me at, at least to kind of see it behind the scenes. Would be- such a good idea to do because you're right it does take you know a long time for every little nuance of the uh, the haunt production as a whole um that video of me training i had put together a whole chainsaw training booklet like so you know so that people knew like this is a weapon this is we yeah. we need safety training on this um and actually we'll talk about valley fright nights but to go back to valley fright nights this was a haunt um over summer at pierce college and i ended up you know having a chainsaw there and i i got to train some people how to scare and use a chainsaw over there but that was a real free-for-all because i wasn't working for universal studios where i had all these rules i had to keep the chainsaw within my body and things like that i got to do all of my tricks and not really care about if I was going to get, you know, in trouble for crawling on the floor, you know, little things like that, where I just let my full monster freak fly. I was jumping around. I was stealing golf carts. It was amazing. It was a free for all. And it was amazing. Um, I think that was my last time scare acting was, was Valley Fight Night. I know. <laughs> and Rob, Rob didn't invite me. So now, uh, now I always, I always tell him every time I see him, I'm like, yeah, I could have experienced that if I would have been invited. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I missed was, that. I don't think Valley Fright Nights ever coming back either. No, but probably it not. Was a, it was a good summer. It's okay. Um, but I think what the and 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 what I also found what what was really fun for you this year too was um, you reuniting and and scaring with your sister again, or giving your you yes. know giving her the opportunity to get out there and, and pick up a chainsaw again and and do it all again. Yes. Like, how fun was that for you to get that one night to do that again at a whole it different location amazing. too? different location and just different atmosphere in entirely. Um, you know, my sister lives in Las Vegas and her and another scare actor friend came out for two nights, the last two nights of the run, just to kind of get their, get their little fix in. Um, but my sister hadn't scared since 2019, since, you know, we were on the lower lot that year and to see her out there again, being crazy. And, you know, I have to trust my actors, uh, you know, as the performance manager at Hayride. And I knew I could trust her with a chainsaw. So I just let her have it. And I was like, have fun, have fun, Diamond. And she was like, I went around and I was watching her like kind of hiding so that she didn't see me watching her. And it was, it was so fun and a great flashback to see her having a blast to the point where I was like, I'm going to wardrobe. So I like ran across the hayride to wardrobe. I'm like, please put me in something that'll match my sister. I want to go scare with her. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't she wasn't expecting me to come out on set because it was a crazy night. But um, I was like, if I can, I'll co- I'll grab a chainsaw and come scare with you. And we just clicked right back into it. Like um, we were ping pong scaring off of people. I was over here distracting, and she was get- getting him with a chainsaw. And it was a great night. Man, if I could have had, if I could have gave each of you entrance music, I so would have. So like when you guys came out, that hype was just there. Because now I'm thinking like, you going to get in wardrobe and then coming out as a surprise. It's like you're a surprise entrant in the damn Royal Rumble coming out. Like your music just hits, and we're just like, what the hell? She showed up. Yeah. Yes, I didn't realize it would be like a big deal, but I also realized that I had 120 scare actors that were under me that had no idea that. Like they knew I was a scare actor, but they didn't know I did chainsaw. They didn't know I had been a scare actor for seven years. Like they didn't really know what I was capable of. So I would I would see characters break and just be like, "Is that Star?" Like, oh, no. like, my actors don't know. It was, was like a second kind of look, like crazy. <laughs> yes, yes. And then I got out of costume, and they're like, "Were you on set?" And I was like, uh, "Maybe uh, you might have seen me." Maybe. Yeah, that's awesome, though. I mean, to get that moment to to, to the person who kind of brought you into this world of the haunt realm, you know what I mean? And and to kind of have that moment where now you're the now you're the one that's in charge. You brought her down 
you know, to do a to do a, a session of scaring and you got to have that moment to scare with her. I mean, that kind of comes whole full circle with this whole story. And that's why mm -hmm. I love talking to you from the beginning to the end, because it did come full circle. It was like one of those moments where you're like, my sister brought me into this world for haunt. Let me bring her into my world this year. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's awesome. That, that's I yeah. mean, that, that right there must have been just sister goals right there. It was super sister pride. Like we were both just like, damn, like, look at this. Yeah. Look at how far we've come in this, in, in this community. And, and now in the industry, I'm, I'm able to like leave a, a mark, you know, leave a lasting mark. Yo, you there, there. And, and you know what, uh, for those who don't know, obviously, or didn't get a chance to see it, there is a panel. I want you to go see after this podcast that star was a moderator of this past year at Midsummer. Uh, you know, it's all about, it showcases all the, the amazing women that are in the haunt community and all the different things that they do. We had some people who were uh, private business owners, people that were, um, you know, content creators, people that were uh, cosplayers and, and showed off their business that way, people that were in the industry who actually helped make events through this year. And then, you know, you got Star who's done it all, who's been in the industry, who's been a fan, who's now been in a management position. Now it's like, You've kind of had that 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 best of both worlds going for you. Um, now, after your your year at Hayride, you're looking. Now we're looking towards the future. Um, future holds a lot. It could be anything for us. Uh, as I know right now, you're still on and off spinning fire. Uh, when you get a gig here and there, um, I believe you're also another one that you just did recently was the Story Films event, which I was so sad that I couldn't show up to. Uh, mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, it was it was a bad day at work, and then just kind of just had that in the back of my mind, like fuck, I could have just called out and went. There. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's okay. Next time, uh, next time for sure. I, I already I already ripped Jay a new one. I'm like, you do these on Saturdays, or I can't show up. <laughs> yeah, really. <no>. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking forward to the future. Do you would you like to continue to to do this management stuff more and and to like, dive deeper into that to that realm of of the haunt world? Yeah, definitely. I feel like last this past season was me scratching the surface like I feel like I need to break through as a performance manager and um, not only get the reviews of improvement I want the reviews where like this event has now become the a event top contender yeah yeah like I there's so much potential there that I don't want to leave it I don't want to leave it. <laughs> like I feel like I can, I, I really can have a good hand in um, molding it to be a great event. No, and 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 that's and that's the the that's the passion that I think that I love about you is that um, once you set your eyes to do something or once you're involved in something, you give it like you say a hundred percent. You give it a hundred and ten percent. Um, and and I've seen that with your years of scare acting at Horror Nights to obviously your transition into Spinning Fire, and then now your your new transition into into management, you know, and and it's just kind of that all those skill sets have built into this this we know today as Star, you know, it's like mm -hmm. it, it's one of those things where just kind of seeing you walk up the steps and just kind of recently every year something new, better and better, bigger and better. Um, I can't wait to see what 2024 ho holds for you. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things coming up. Um, and I can't wait to see where we find you next haunt season, whether that is management again, or whether that's a guest, no matter what, it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great time. That's all. That's all I can say it's about that. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be yep, a great time. Thank you so much. 100%. Yeah. I always say, you know, just got to shoot your shot and go after what you want, um, with re reckless abandon, just throw yourself into something if you're interested and in, or you know intrigued by something go for it um you know I, I just always say shoot your shot you never know what answer you're gonna get shoot your shot indeed i love that saying that that that's what i always say too is just you know what's the worst that you're gonna say no okay no, just get exactly. back up and do it again no exactly go after what you want before we end this this podcast, and this has been a great podcast to get to know to get to know you more as as a friend, and and just to kind of get to know your history of just sitting down and talking horror nights. That's it's been fun for me now. Um, I have to ask the most hard hitting question, usually the one that a lot of people have struggled with, but I think we kind of already answered it in the beginning of the show. Um, it, maybe not. Who knows? It might be a surprise for me. What is your favorite scary movie? 
Hmm. I got to go old school because I feel like as an adult, they were more, I wasn't watching them as scary movies. The one that really scared me was The Ring. Oh, that's a good one. So I'm going to say The Ring. That's a good one. Uh, fun, fun story about that. My, my best friend, Sammy went to, uh, he went to Channel Islands for college and I remember going up there one weekend and hanging out with him and stuff. And then he told me, he tells me, he goes, do you want to go see the ring? Well, and I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, the well from the movie, the ring, it's literally right up the hill right there. That's where they shot it at. And I was like, and I'm spending the night here tonight. I was like, dude, you, if you would have told me that like ahead of time, I would have been like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to get a hotel like down the way, but yeah, I'll wait for you to come home and we'll hang out then. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, I'm not going anywhere near that. Well, I know what's in that. Well, Um, Oh my gosh. It's Samara. Yeah. It's, that's a good one. A very good one. Um, Mm -hmm. Star, I, I, I want to thank you so much. I'm glad we finally got to do a podcast. I think we've been in the works of doing this now for like two years. Um, Yep. But now we finally did it, and I'm super, super happy about that. Um, for anyone who wants to kind of continue to follow your journey or anything, where can they find you on any social medias or any other platforms? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, you know, anyone who wants to follow me and come on the journey with me, my handle is Spooky Starla Flame. There it is. And you won't miss her because she's got a really cool logo that um, an artist drew her, drew her mm-hmm. spinning fire, and it's, it's a really cool logo. I actually have the sticker on my laptop right here. Um, yeah, thanks. Of course. Well, Star, I, I really appreciate all you do for the Han industry. Um, I appreciate your friendship, and I, I really just appreciate you as a person. You, you've, you've done so much. You've, you don't know that, but you've been part of my Haunt history as well. So you, you know, you and I at Horror Nights, and then to see you go and do bigger and better things. Um, so proud of you, and uh, I can't wait to see what comes next. Thank you so much. I'm proud of you as well. I really appreciate you bringing me on and wanting me to do this. So thank you. Of course. For all those who are new to the channel, we hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the Miles 4 Podcast. Uh, Tune in next time for another guest. Don't know who that will be, but we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. But if you guys are new, uh, hit that subscribe button, the bell notification, be where every time we put up a new video, follow us on all of our socials, all in the link in the bio. Until then, y'all have a great one. Star, look at Star's got the energy. We just, we ending this and she's ready to go round two. We ended this, but uh, you guys have a great one. Star, you have a great one and we'll see you guys. Happy, happy new year to you all. And let's make 2424 a big one. Bye.